Hello. So after the Cottonwood Bud video, um, the question came up, well, where do you get your stuff? So let me show you what I've got and where I get it. And um, I am just a beginner with the medicinal plants, especially here in Alaska. So I am learning. I am just learning. I did take a couple of little courses online, but uh, nothing big or fancy. So I would love to take some actual courses and become an herbalist. That would be amazing. So maybe we will, maybe we won't. I don't know yet. You'll have to excuse the background. I just finished canning up a bunch of fireweed jelly, which I'll make another video on that later. <laughs> but uh, for right now, let me show you what I have. So for medicinal herbs, hold on a second. Timber, oh. The dog gets in the way. Go. Can't live in Alaska without a dog. <laughs> Doesn't happen. So anyway, for uh, so for right now, because I'm just starting out, I have Devil's Club in a tincture. I do tinctures and oils and dried. So those three. I have not tried glycerin yet. I have a willow bark in a tincture. I have yarrow. I love yarrow. I have that in a tincture. And then for oils, or I also have cottonwood bud tincture. I actually sell that. People actually really enjoy it and buy it at the local farmer's market. So, and then for oils, I have a devil's club oil. I have actually have a ton of it. That is the main ingredient in my arthritis ad, which people actually also buy as well. Because it really, really works. I love devil's club. It works amazing for achy, uh, muscles and joints for arthritis. I have RA and it works wonders. So I have yarrow oil and I have cottonwood bud oil. This has been in there a while. That's why they're all kind of opened up. Um, I do have a yarrow devil's club cottonwood bud oil blend, which I use a lot in the salves. Um, for dried herbs, I have mullein, which I love mullein. I really, really enjoy this stuff. This stuff is amazing. This right here is from Wyoming. I had my brother who lives in Wyoming. <laughs> I'm learning not to give all that extra information out there. So my brother who lives in Wyoming went way up in the mountains and got me a little, a couple little plants. And the thought process behind that was, we go up in the mountains of Wyoming, they're already semi-climatized. So he sent them to me, not quite overnight mail, but almost, and I got it quickly, amazingly enough, here in Alaska, got it planted, and it is already about this tall. It is growing amazing. Now this is mid-August, and uh, so winter's coming, and I'm crossing my fingers and really hoping it survives the winter and grows crazy next spring because I would love to have some fresh mullein to be able to use and utilize in our salves and tinctures and teas and stuff like that. So hopefully it keeps growing, crossing my fingers. I don't know. We'll see. So also I get spruce tips. Now this one's kind of brown because I dried it in the oven and I probably left it in there a little too long, but I was really afraid of not drying it enough. So it's very high in vitamin C. It's pretty good in a tea. I have dandelion leaf, which we all know is high in like a multivitamin. It's like the nature's multivitamin dandelions. I have horse hoof, which I'm just learning this. I'm not sure exactly what all to do with this. I'm still learning that one, but it grows here on my property. So I've been harvesting it and we'll see. It's supposed to be really good. I'm not positive. I am also learning Uzia, Uznia, Uznia, I think that's how you pronounce it. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, this is amazing, but I use that in teas, and I'm probably going to add that to my uh, cold flu medicine tea. This is turmeric and ginger and yellow pine, again from my brother in Wyoming, because I don't have yellow pine up here. Uh, lemon, Rubio, Rub Rubos, Rubos, I don't know exactly how to pronounce that one. Mullion and Indian tea or Labrador tea as it's also called. My daughter 
was sick this last week with a cold um, sinus infection kind of thing going on. And so I thought, hmm, good time to try it. Let's try this out. So I thought it would work. I've been kind of doing a lot of research and figured out what works and what doesn't. So I thought this should work. And it did. She took a, a couple, I made a couple of cups of it. And within a couple of minutes, she was like, mom's really feeling better. I'm like, perfect. I'll make more. So not sure what else. I might leave it. I might add a couple more things to it. I don't know yet. But it works really well. And then I've got my powdered yarrow and my uh, dehydrated devil's club. So I don't have a lot, comparatively speaking. I know some other people who have tons, and that is amazing. Um, I did trade some strawberry plants for some comfrey plants because I like to horse trade. It's easier up here. So, um... I should have, next spring, I should have a ton of comfrey, which I'm really, really excited about. Comfrey is a very strong um, herb and plant, but I would, I will, my plan is, sorry, I'm kind of stuttering there. My plan is to add a little bit of comfrey because it's very, very strong, but add it to the first aid cream. I think it will work. I think it will do very well, as long as I don't add too much because comfrey is very strong. So... That's what I have for now and where I get my information from, which was the other part of the question I was asked, is I do a lot of, um, I know it's not doctorate or professional maybe, but um, I do have a lot, I am on a lot of Facebook um, foraging and medicinal plants websites where I ask questions, I'll watch answers and see what other questions other people have, especially some of the Alaskan ones. Um, I did take a couple classes online, which they were very basic, so nothing great there. But um, I am doing a lot of studying, and I also read a lot of books. I collect foraging and medicinal plant books. And um, give me just a minute. Let me put all the stuff away, and I'll show you the books I get my information out of so you can verify and you can do your own research. One moment. Okay. So I got that stuff put away. Actually, I just moved down to the other counter <laughs> for now. So, but books. So my favorite books are these two. Alaska's Wild Plants and Plants of the Pacific Northwest Coast. These are my absolute favorite. I am kind of a picture person. I want to be able to see it because you can tell me all about it, but unless I can see it, I'm always afraid I'm going to grab the wrong plant. And that could be disastrous because some lookalikes are very dangerous. So the plants of the Pacific Northwest Coast does include Alaska. Some of the plants in here obviously don't grow here. But some of them do. And the ones that do, it is very informative. Great pictures, drawings. It shows you lookalikes. Gives you recipes. It's really, really good. This one is Alaska's plants. I love this one. I actually take this one with me when I'm foraging sometimes just to make sure I'm doing it correctly and I know what I'm getting. I'm not getting the wrong thing. Some of the other ones I do grab some of my information from and that I study is the book from the Quinault Nation. My husband and daughter are Quinault native and so this one has some of the plants that grow here because we are, well I live in Willow so it's not southern Alaska. But it's close enough that we do have some, some similar plants to the Washington coast. Now, if I lived down in Homer or Seward, we'd have a lot more, but we do have a few. And this has good information on those. Medicinal Plants of the Pacific West is really, really good. It also has quite a few of Alaskan plants in here that grow, you know, in the same place, in the same topography. It does not have color photos. So a lot of times I'll find it in here because it's got a lot of information. And then I'll look up the picture in one of these two books. So this is also a very, very good one. And then I have a couple of these. I don't really get into these two as much. Edible wild plants, mushrooms, fruits, and nuts. It's not real applicable to Alaska. It is very interesting. I mean, I'm, there's a couple that are. I have it more for informational sake. And the field guide to edible wild plants um, 
is really, really good, but it does encompass the entire U.S., which, as most of us Alaska knows, a lot of times they mean the lower 48. So, but some of the plants are in here that grow here, but not a lot. This one is more on the medicinal side. It's not necessarily foraging or wild plant identification. A lot of it is for plants that I have potted in the house because, again, I live in Alaska. So this is how to grow them, how to use them, a lot of information about the plant itself, um, a lot of like recipes, how it can be used. This is a very, very, very good book. It's got a lot of recipes. And uh, yeah, this one is be a very good one to add to your library. And this one, this is almost a history book and <laughs> a forager's book and a recipe book, kind of all in one. I just got it. I'm very excited about it. And I can't wait to read it. It is Edible and Medicinal Plants of Southwest Alaska from the Natives. So it is very, very good. And I'm very excited about reading this one. So that's where I get my information. And that's the little bit of medicinal plants that I have right now. Do you know something else that grows up here or that I should check, check into? By all means, let me know. Thanks. Mm -hmm.